Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense. I hope that all you guys are doing super well. Just doing fantastic, having the best day, best evening, best friggin' everything. So here's what we're doing today. I went to Macy's.com because Macy's moves the most product in terms of fragrances. And I sorted by best sellers. So that's gonna tell me what most casual people, normal people, I guess he'd say, are buying right now. And only being able to look at the first page of bestsellers, the first 60 cents, I can choose 10 and keep those for myself. Everything else gets trashed. I think I own like every single fragrance on that bestsellers list, <laughs> but uh, we're keeping 10. Let's jump into it. I'll show you guys what I picked. And here's a little proof of what fragrances were there on the first page as of when I made this video. It's right there, you're seeing it, that's it. And I gotta say also that the sponsored fragrances don't count because those are sponsored. It's not actually in the bestseller list. They're just trying to get you to buy them. Goes without saying guys, that bestseller list, that's gonna change. Like by the time I put this video up, it'll probably be different but that's a snapshot in time, and that's what I'm going off of. So here we go. First fragrance I'm keeping, Code Absolute from Giorgio Armani. Gotta have this. I'm actually really surprised to see this still in the best seller, still right up there toward the top, baby. It's my favorite Armani code. Said it a million times. I love this stuff. It's sweet, it's spicy, it's got a nice effervescent sparkle to it off the top. Big time compliment puller, good performance. It's a great evening fragrance, great cool weather scent. Armani Code Absolute immediately jumped out to me. When I was scrolling through everything and I saw it, immediately just wrote that down like, yep, I'm keeping that one. And for me on a personal level, Giorgio Armani, or just Armani in general, seems to nail their flankers more than a lot of other brands. Some brands will put out flankers and you got like a 50-50 shot. You know, it could smell decent, it could smell like trash. Armani, more often than not, is gonna be at least good, if not great. Oh, and in case uh, it wasn't obvious, since these are the best sellers on the first page of Macy's, these are all gonna be pretty common fragrances. You're gonna recognize these, or you should. Second fragrance I'm keeping, Why Eau de Parfum from Yves Saint Laurent. Now that first best sellers page is loaded to the gills with blue fragrances. I mean, they're everywhere. You've got Sauvage, you got Blue de Chanel, you got Why, you got a whole mess load of them on there. Why Eau de Parfum has never let me down. If I'm looking for one of those dumb reach, easy to wear, versatile, mass appealing scents, Y Eau de Parfum and Y Le Parfum often are my sense of choice. I love the ginger, the apple, the bergamot, and the opening. It gives it a nice twist, nice little change of pace compared to some of the other heavy hitter blue scents out there. It's got that sweetness that you would expect. You know, it really helps with that attention grabbing feel of the scent, but then it's got a touch of class to it as well. So why Eau de Parfum? I'm gonna throw that in my bag. I'm gonna keep that one. Now this next one, I feel like could be in its final days, but I'm hoping not. Truly, honestly, I hope that they kick this line back up into gear, come out with some new releases, really rejuvenate it. That would be awesome. I would love that. It is Prada Loam. It's still up there in the best sellers. So, I mean, there, there's hope yet, right? They killed off Prada Loam Intense apparently, and that one, frankly, was better than this one, but what are you gonna do? Iris, Amber, Pepper, and Neroli, some of the notes in this fragrance, and Iris is something you're gonna need to get used to because some of these fragrances coming up, they've got Iris in them. I'm a big fan of Iris, and seeing the proliferation of Iris across best-selling fragrances right now is really interesting to see. Go back in time a number of years and you wouldn't have expected it at all. Iris has been one of those things that is readily accepted by people in the fragrance world. They love it. All the different ways it can come across, all the different facets, man, it's great. But then for a long time, your average everyday person would be like, Iris, no. But it looks like they're coming around. So hopefully it keeps going. The Iris here are gonna be more of that soapy, powdery Prada style of Iris. Great office fragrance, great casual scent. You can wear it formally as well. Super easy to pull off, very inoffensive. Prada Loam, I'm keeping it. Another Armani up next, Aqua de Jo Profundo. I need an Aqua de Jo in my life. So if I'm only gonna keep 10, then one of those is gonna be an Aqua de Jo. And as I've said a number of times, currently, this one's my favorite. Now, Aqua de Jo Eau de Parfum was also there on the bestseller list, uh, along with a few different Aqua de Jo's actually. 
But of those, Profundo is the one I'm going with. Yeah, Eau de Parfum is newer and I like that one as well, but I still like Profundo more. This one's not quite as heavy as Aqua de Jo Eau de Parfum is, a little more fresh, and that's why I'm going for it. That Aqua de Jo DNA, modernized with a green edge and a mineralic twist, it's good stuff. Now this one, I got lucky. It was the very last fragrance on the first page. So the very, very last bestseller as of when I decided to do this video. It is Gentleman Eau de Parfum Reserve Privé, the newest in the Gentleman line. And once again, my iris obsession getting scratched with this one. Also has whiskey in here, chestnut, woody notes, a little tiny touch of bergamot. It expands on that Gentleman DNA, that iris DNA, that touch of booze, that gourmandy edge. It smells fantastic. I love this stuff. Keep going back to it, can't get enough. Gentlemen Eau de Parfum Reserve Privé. <laughs> Heck of a name, but keeping that one. Now a classic, well at this point anyway, a classic. Dolce & Gabbana's The One Eau de Parfum. Definitely, definitely keeping this. If for nothing else or for no other reason than just to have it myself and occasionally go, mmm, good. Grapefruit, ginger, tobacco, and amber. Some of the notes in the fragrance, amazing date night fragrance. Uh, great for evenings out, sweet, sexy, spicy, alluring, inviting, all those things. It's just such a good release for Dolce & Gabbana. The only negative part is that every, the one that has come out since this gets held up and compared to this one. And they'll say, hey, is it better than the one Eau de Parfum? And, uh, Really, the answer is no. A lot of people will say the performance could be better, which is true, but the only other issue really with Dolce & Gabbana is the one Eau de Parfum is that they set the bar so high for the line so early on. The one Eau de Toilette is still fantastic. I think it's a really good scent. This improved on that one though, pretty much every way you could imagine. And this is just so good as a designer scent that everything that came out after this is uh, playing catch up. Next fragrance I'm gonna keep, Le Mal Le Parfum from Jean-Paul Gaultier. Cardamom, vanilla, lavender, and once again, iris. Some of the notes in the fragrance. Seems to be like the, uh, the go-to thing right now, you know? You're modernizing a fragrance or you're trying to make something that smells modern, put some iris in there. Admittedly, the iris in here is not as prominent as in Prada Lome, Gentleman Eau de Parfum Reserve Privé. You know, it's not as forward in the scent profile as those two scents. You can still smell the iris in here though. Adds a good amount of depth, really brings everything up a notch. Le Mal Le Parfum, gonna keep that, gonna rock that. Great modern take on the original's DNA. Up next to Tom Ford. Now I don't have the version that's on the website, but I'm making the rules here and I'm keeping it. So deal with it. It's ombre leather, but mine is ombre leather 16. But I would keep this of everything that's on there. So obviously my issue here is they came out with this in the private blend line and I bought it. Here it is. And then they discontinued it, but not actually because they just released it in their signature line for less money. So it's just one of those deals where I have this version and I'm not gonna go through this whole bottle. So why would I buy the new one? It's kind of where I'm at. You know, Tom Ford got me once, right? But not gonna get me again. Leather, cardamom, saffron, amber, some of the notes in the scent, really nice. This is a very, very, very good leather fragrance with a lot of wearability, actually. A lot of people will tell you that this is an easier to wear take almost on Tuscan leather. I mean, definitely there are similarities between this and Tuscan leather, but there are differences as well. Regardless though, when you look through that bestsellers page, that first page, the Tom Ford just jumped out to me right away. And I thought to myself, man, if I'm only gonna get 10 here, one of them is gonna be that. Sure, it doesn't have that versatility of a Prada Lome or a Wyo de Parfum or an Aqua de Jo Profundo, but I also don't care at all about that because I already have that versatility locked down with those fragrances. So something that is just going to absolutely set me apart in fall or winter, especially during the evening, ombre leather stands above just about every other option there. All right, we're down to the final two. Up next, Prada Lunarosa Ocean. Now I would have picked Lunarosa Black, but it was not available. Uh, apparently it doesn't sell as well as Lunarosa Ocean or Lunarosa Carbon. Uh, 
Imagine that. Once again, though, I got my Iris. This does have Iris in it, which makes sense because it is Prada and they love Iris. It is not, though, that very powdery type of uh, Iris that you're going to find in Prada Loam. So even though there is Iris here and it is a Prada, it's not the same type of Iris. Obviously, another blue fragrance. So versatility, mass appeal, compliment factor. That's what this is manufactured for. Made to be worn pretty much anytime, anywhere. Yes, the name Lunarosa Ocean, the blue bottle, all that is gonna make you think summer, daytime. But realistically, the type of scent that this is, you can use it year round. Lunarosa Ocean, I think smells really nice. Keep going back to it. And it's not as played out for me as Dior Sauvage or Blue de Chanel. And don't take that as me saying Sauvage smells bad, Blue de Chanel smells bad. They don't at all. It's just, I've worn those a lot more. And so at this moment in time, I'll take Lunarosa Ocean. Last scent, Tom Ford once again, Noir Extreme. I've got to, just got to. I mean, you put this on there with all the other fragrances that I have options to take and I've already got pretty much all my bases covered here. Fall, winter, spring, summer, daytime, nighttime, all that stuff. I'm gonna take this because this is probably the most unique smelling fragrance that's available on that bestsellers page. Vanilla, wood, spices, kofi, some of the notes, not coffee, kofi. This is a stunning fragrance. Gonna be better for cool weather, evening situations, formal situations, black tie situations. Tom Ford Noir Extreme smells great. I was really pumped to see this one available. So there we go. Those are the 10 that I'm keeping. Let me know in the comments some of the ones that you would pick that I didn't. And as always, thank you guys for hanging with me. Thank you for your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.